Hello everyone. Welcome to part 13 of the biology crash course series. So today we are going to talk about chromosomes, alleles, genotype, and haplotype. I think this is one of the most confusing topics there is in the world of bioinformatics. So let's dive in. So let's think about a few things. Humans have 23 chromosome pairs in their nucleus. Humans also have double-stranded DNA. But how does these 23 chromosome pairs relate to double-stranded DNA? Like, are they the same thing? There are more. Humans also have genes, each of which consists of a pair of alleles. So now, more confusion. Pair of chromosomes, double-stranded DNA, and pair of alleles. How do they exactly relate? We don't know. We have to find out. One of the allele pairs comes from mother and the other one from father. But how does it happen? How exactly do we inherit it? How exactly do we inherit these things from our father and our mother? We need to understand this. And in spite of us inheriting the same set of chromosomes from mother and father, how come our sisters or our brothers are so much different from us? So this is also something we need to find out. So all these questions, they are very common questions. I mean, when I was going through different papers, different research or different topics, I often stumbled upon these things and I was very, very confused. But hopefully after this video, your confusion will be over completely. So finally, we are going to talk about human genotype and haplotype and we'll end the video there. So let's start with the simple things. So we have billions of cells in the human body and each cell contains nucleus. So every single cell has a nucleus and inside each of these nucleus, we have 23 chromosome pairs. So if you have a billion cells in the human body, there are billion 23 chromosome pairs because these 23 pairs exist in all the nucleuses. So you can, I mean, visualize it in this way. So as you can see that we have a pair of chromosomes in chromosome one, a pair of chromosome two, a pair of chromosome three, and so on and so forth. So there are like 23 chromosome pairs. Now, one of these paired chromosomes comes from the mother. So maybe this one is from the mother, 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 and so on and so forth. So one of these pairs will have to come from the mother, and the other pair will have to come from the father. Okay, so let's actually see how it looks like. So you can think of these chromosome pairs. I'm just showing, showing you one chromosome pair, just for clarity. So I mean, the father has a pair of chromosome, maybe this is chromosome one, and the mother has a pair of chromosome, maybe this is also chromosome 1. Now, the child inherits one chromosome from the father and one chromosome from the mother. And that is how the child chromosome pair is formed. Now, if you uh, want to ask more, like, uh, how does the father have these two chromosomes, then you have to ask his father. That means the grandfather actually gives him one chromosome and the grandmother gives him the other chromosome. And same goes for the mother. The mother's father, that means the maternal grandfather and the maternal grandmother. So the chain continues. But is that, I mean, is it that simple? I, unfortunately not. There is something for recombination, which I don't want to skip just to simplify the video. Okay, so let's actually look at that. So this was our initial picture, father and mother, which is good, but it doesn't start from here. So what happens is first, there is an, a phenomenon for recombination. So these two chromosomes, they sort of exchange genetic materials with each other. As you can see that they have exchanged materials. Same goes for the mother. And this is an extremely random event. So it can happen at any place. After this, the inheritance happens. So child is inheriting this chromosome and from the father and uh, this chromosome from the mother. So this is exactly how the inheritance happens. Now, you and your brother are very different because of the randomness in the recombination process. Okay, that is the main moral of the story right here. So you now know how the 23 chromosome pairs have actually come into being. So that's point number one. And you can accelerate a little bit now that you understand this. So let's now understand where does the double-stranded DNA come into play. So first of all, double-stranded DNA and chromosome pair are two different things. So we know that one full DNA, one full strand of DNA is 3 billion base pair. So one full double-stranded DNA is wrapped around the mother's side of chromosome pairs. So we know that 23 chromosomes of our nucleus comes from the father and 23 come from the mother. So the 23 that comes from the mother actually has one full double-stranded DNA wrapped around it. So you can see right here, pictorially, I have just shown you a very silly picture. 
So this may, you can think of this as a chromosome and uh, the developed standard DNA is wrapped around this chromosome on a structure called histone protein. But that is another thing that is not what we want to discuss in this video because I have discussed about the DNA wrapping around histone proteins in part one of the lecture series. So you can check part one out of the series as well. But that is not the main thing for this video. Okay. And the same thing happens in the further side of the CHR pairs. So basically you now have 6 billion base pair worth of double standard DNA in each human cell nucleus. Okay. And this happens in literally every human cell nucleus. Okay. So I think now this is very clear to you. So double stranded DNA is wrapped around each chromosome. I mean, one full double strand, which is stimulant base pair, is wrapped around the mother's side, and another full double strand is wrapped around the father's side. Now, the next question that is coming to your mind is how do these two double stranded DNAs actually function together? Right? That is the that is one of the main questions. So let's actually see that shortly. So now we are going to cover the concept of a pair of alleles. So the allele pair actually has a lot of things to do with the chromosome pair. I will now actually explain how. So first of all, you can see that this double stranded DNA comes from the father. This double stranded DNA comes from the mother's side. As I explained in the previous slide, that one double stranded DNA wraps around the mother part of the chromosome and the other wraps around the father part of the chromosome. That is what I am showing you in this picture. So we know that there are genes in some parts of the DNA and those genes actually like transcribe to uh, mRNA and then that sort of translates to protein, which does everything in our human body, right? Which we know from the previous videos. Now let's assume that we have two genes. We have one gene right here, gene A, and one gene right here, gene B. Now, Gene A is actually exactly the same in both father and mother DNA, except for this part, the marked part that I've marked in black right here, zigzag and plain part. So suppose this gene differs between the father and mother DNA strand only in this part. So this is this is going to be called heterozygous allele pair. Okay, this is heterozygous allele pair because they don't match exactly between father and mother. Okay, so this is one allele pair. And if we look at gene B, gene B has exactly the same, exactly the same DNA sequence in gene B. That is why it is called homozygous allele pair. So this is what allele is all about. So let me explain allele a little bit more. So basically, each gene has two copies, and these two copies are called a pair of alleles. One of the alleles come from the father, and the other comes from the mother. That is how simple it is. Now, let me explain a little bit more. Suppose this is the gene. This is the gene, these are the sequences. So I'm now, now showing you things at a sequence level. So, I mean, genes are normally extremely long. It is like thousands of bases, but just for showing, demonstrating, I'm just showing a very small snippet, snapshot of the gene. So this part, this double-stranded DNA of the gene comes from the father. You can see here A, A, C, G, C. And this is the complementary base because we know that uh, in double-stranded DNA, there is the complementary strand. This is the complementary strand. A, T, and C, G are the complementary bases. And then this is for the mother. So you can see that in the mother, there is only one difference with the father. And that is where the heterozygous allele pair idea comes into play. That is what I was talking about. Now, what is genotype? So genotype only tells us what are the constituting element of the different genes? So we know that here in this picture, A, 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 C, T, G, G, and C, C are the constituent part. So you can see A, 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 C, T, G, G, and C, C, right? Now, you can obviously tell me that, okay, why don't we talk about the complementary strand? We don't need to do that because we can easily infer that, right? We know that the complementary base of A is T and complementary base of C is G. So we don't need to mention that. So we can only mention the forward strand. So in genotype, we only know what are the alleles that are there in the gene, okay? But we have no idea which allele comes from which parent. So we, we don't know. We don't know that A, A, C, G, C, this first column comes from the father. We don't know that. That is why it's called unfazed. And in, in most analysis, this is okay. I mean, this is sufficient knowledge for doing what we want to do. But sometimes, if we want more information, we need to know about the haplotype, which is actually a phased thing. So here, we know exactly which allele comes from which parent. So we know that A, A, C, G, C comes from the father and A, A, T, G, C comes from the mother. So that is all about, uh, I mean, chromosome pairs, double standard DNA, allele, genotype, and haplotype. So if you like the video, make sure to subscribe and share the video with your friends. And we have donation link in the description. So if you want to donate to our channel, you can do that. And it tremendously helps us grow as a channel and to make great content for you.
Thank you very much.